And I said, Will, if you've seen Above the Rim, you would know about this motherfucker. That that's why it's important for the youth to know the history. If, if you've seen Above the Rim, you should know, stay away from people like that. That is Birdie. Only thing missing is, is Montar, whatever his name is, the, the Wood Harris character, okay, the, the, the sidekick. Alright y'all, here it is, Bel Air Season 2, Episode 2. So what started out as a mediocre season opener, I mean at least to me, because look, right now I'm watching Wu-Tang. I'm watching Snowfall, I'm watching Godfather of Harlem, you know what I'm saying, I'm watching some dope-ass shows, BMF, and so here comes Bel Air now, and it's like, okay, well, at least it's a change of pace, at least it's not having to do with drugs, okay, so cause it seems like I've been watching a lot of gangster shit about drugs, and but I mean, I, I like these shows, but, you know, yeah, I guess it's good to get something different, so here it is, the, uh, <laughs> the Great Value Huxtables are back, alright, and this time around... Uh, this episode was actually uh, really interesting. You know, I, I really dug this episode. So, starts out with um, uh, OG Ashley Banks. I forgot the name of her character in the show. But she gets fired from the school because she's been teaching Ashley and I guess other black students uh, some extracurricular uh, black history and whatnot. And one of the white students caught wind of that and I guess told whoever. And then whoever told whoever, next thing you know, OG Ashley is at the job. Which is fucked up. And one of the most interesting scenes in the episode is when uh, Aunt Viv goes to meet with the with the board, the education board or whatever, and they all agree, like, yeah, you know, there's a curriculum that needs to be taught here, and she broke that, so that's why we had to get rid of her. But it's like, that, that's some real shit, because in a lot of these schools, I believe in most of these schools, majority of these schools, they don't want a lot of this black history being taught. You know, like, shit, when I went to high school, we only had one black history class, and that was an elective. That was like a half a semester class. So out of four years... I have a half a semester of black history. Get the fuck out of here. Well, come to think about it, there's no Asian uh, history either. She was, well, shit. There needs to be courses in that teach on a lot of cultures, you know what I'm saying? Because the, the most of the culture that I learned of was white culture. Like, that was it. That was it. Anyways, kind of got sidetracked here. Didn't mean to get all political and shit. Because I know motherfuckers going to be, yeah, Rashad, you know, you're... You're a leftist, you know what? How about I suck this left nut? How about that? All right. So, <laughs> um, so okay. Well, what else is going on in, in the world of Bel Air? So Carlton is trying to get off the meds. He's trying to get off this uh, anti-anxiety uh, medication, and Will takes him to the club. You know, Will, Jazz, and Carlton go to the club, and Carlton dances with not one but two chicks. All right. So it looks like his anxiety is going away. But I have a funny feeling it's going to come back with a vengeance and worse than ever before. And he's probably not only going to be snorting that shit, but he's probably going to be shooting that shit in his fucking veins. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm happy for Carlton, but I'm worried about him because I know that uh, it, it, this is not going to end well. And as far as Will, yeah, Will's definitely moved on from Lisa. You know what I'm saying? At first, Will and Lisa was all lovey-dovey and shit. And there was even a point where I thought Lisa was pregnant. But, yeah, Lisa and Will is history now. He done moved on to Jackie. Now, if I recall... In the sitcom, Jackie was uh, played by Tyra Banks. She came from the old neighborhood. And even though in the show they really didn't, they was more like friends, like homies that had potential to be uh, a couple, but didn't happen. But it looks like with this Jackie, um, yeah, it looks like Will's going to be knocking boots. You know, knocking the boots. Knocking the stuffing off that Egg McMuffin, you know what I mean? But here, here's the thing. Jackie's uncle happens to be... Uh, the, uh, the Birdie character from Above the Rim. Okay, I don't know exactly what his position is, but he reminds me of Birdie. You know, the Tupac character where he recruits these players to come work for him and all that shit. And I said, Will, if you've seen Above the Rim, you would know about this motherfucker. That that's why it's important for the youth to know the history. If, if you've seen Above the Rim, you should know, stay away from people like that. That is Birdie. Only thing missing is, is Montar, whatever his name is, the, the Wood Harris character, okay, the, the, the sidekick. So, yeah, Will showed out on the basketball court. Now he got Birdie's attention. I don't, I don't know the character's name on the show yet, so I'm just going to call him Birdie for now. Uncle Phil could see something ain't right with this guy, so, you know, Uncle Phil had to step to him like, all right, anything you got to say to Will, you say to me. But uh, thank God Jeffrey's back in the picture, so, you know, I, I like that scene where Phil had to go, you no know, bend the knee, hat in hand. Jeffrey, I'm sorry. We need you back, brother. We miss you. We love you. Come on back home. And Jeffrey at first reluctant. Says, okay, you know what, yeah, 
You know, let, let's let bygones be bygones. Here, here's a cigar, nigga. You know, let, let, let's do this thing again. So good to see Jeffrey back because I want to see him get on this John Wick shit because we got teased that last season. So hopefully this season we can get that. And probably the first person he's going to John Wick is the birdie ripoff. Okay, so let's, let's see how that goes. And now let's get to Hillary and Jazz. So Hillary, who I can look at all day. I think she's a violent frog here, sweeter than bear meat. So um, she wants to be with Je she wants to be with Jazz, but uh, not in public because she's this uh, social media influencer, and so she has to have two Hillarys: the one that's just for social media and that's attainable, and the one that uh, can have a life and have a boyfriend and stuff. But man, look at it. As a YouTuber, fuck all that, man. I, be transparent. Be who you are. The camera never lies. Look, I ain't got to hide shit. I mean, I ain't going to tell you all my personal shit. Like, I'm not going to tell you every time I go in there and make me a spam sandwich. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to have, like, yes, this is the Rashad that you see on camera. And this is the Rashad outside of, of YouTube. I mean, shit. I, I am who I am all the way around. You know, as Popeye says, I am what I am. So you meet me in person, I'm the same motherfucker that you see on camera. Okay, I curse like a sailor. I can sometimes talk ignorant. But I got a big heart. And, you know... That, that's what it is, man. Easy to be around. You know what I mean? So, yeah, Hillary pulls a fast one in jazz where she uh, acts to borrow 64 and Paula and, you know, make her little video and whatnot. And jazz catches her in the act and they have a moment. And it's like, all right, you know what? <clears throat> I get it. If I had a girlfriend like Hillary, I wouldn't be tripping that bad either because, you know, find a chick like that, that's single, that's, you know. It's not an easy thing to do. So, yeah, Jazz, hold on to that. And he finally meets the parents. So, my first thought is, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all thought this too when y'all watched Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, the first thing I thought of when he met Uncle Phil was Uncle Phil grabbing him like this and out the fucking door. But, you know, this, this is the drama version of Fresh Prince. So, I don't think we're going to get that not yet. But to pay homage, I think at some point, probably give us that scene. You know, maybe not as goofy as that, but give us. A version of where Uncle Phil throws Jazz out the fucking house. And besides the school board meeting where I like how they show the, I don't want to say corruption, but just the, the, the bigotry of the school system, right? And you also see the bigotry in the sports system as well. So, okay, I played football back in the day, right? And it was it was a very diverse school that I went to. You know, it was black. It was mostly uh, Italian, Jewish, and black or whatever, right? But the philosophy of the coaches was white line, black backs. Okay, so if, if you was big and white, most likely you was slow and you was strong, so we're going to put you on the line. And if you was black, you was, you know, supposed to be fast and very athletic, so we're going to put you as a linebacker or a cornerback. So it was very rare that you had a, a lineman that was of color. So when I played football, it was me and, and my main man, Abed. He was from El Salvador, and we were the only people of color on the line. Like, no shit. We were the only people of color. I actually know that there was one more. There was one more, my boy Griff. So it was only three of us. So out of like all, it was probably like maybe, what, 20 or 30 linemen. It was only, out of 30 linemen, it was only three of us that was of color. You know what I'm saying? But none of us started. Well, Abed, he started offensive, okay? He started um, offensive guard. But we got treated badly by the other linemen. Like, what like what y'all doing here? White line, black backs, motherfucker. Y'all ain't down with TWA. What's TWA? Total White Alliance. Get the fuck out of here. So I know about the bigotry also in sports. So I say that to say that uh, Will, even though he's the star of the team, he has to give the white boy shine. So it's like even though he can hit the final shot, the coach wants him to pass the ball off. So at first it comes across as, okay, Will be a team player, do what your coach says. But then you find out later on, like, no, the coach has his own agenda. He wants Will, even though Will is the workhorse, but he wants the white boy to get the shine. And Will catches on to that. So guess what? He takes matters into his own hands. Wins the game, which is also kind of reminiscent of Above the Rim. So a lot of Above the Rim influences on this show. And I love that. I got say, yeah, stick it to his ass. Stick it to that man. Fuck that coach, man. What are you going to do? Kick you off the team? It's because of you that they that y'all here. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't about to do shit. Bow down. Take a seat. And let me do my thing. So I, I love that. All right. So, um, yeah, dope ass episode. Dug it. Uh, what you guys think about it? You know, at first, like I said, when the season first started, I'm like, eh. I don't know about this season, man. But now I'm I'm on board now. I'm wide awake. I'm like, okay, I want to see where this season goes, and hopefully nobody gets killed like in Above the Rim. You know, we we don't need another uh, <laughs> another birdie situation where somebody gets sliced up with a razor or gets a bullet hole in their chest. You know what I mean? 
So anyways, uh, comment freely below what you thought about the episode. If you like it, dig this content, hit the like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.